Hi, I'm Rob and today we're at the Churchillian on Portsdown Hill. The Churchillian was built in 1964 for the Salisbury Brewers, Gibbs Mew. And it's got a fantastic position, lovely function room as well with that terrace you see on top, that you can hire. It's on top of Portsdown Hill and it's overlooking all of this. Fantastic views right over the city of Portsmouth and the Solent and the Isle of Wight across the Gosport right down to the western Solent. We start our walk leaving the pub behind and crossing over the Portsdown Hill. And we're going to follow the path along towards Port Whitley. Oh, and you can see a flare stack on for the oil refinery in the distance, blazing away. And at the gate, we're going to turn right up the steps, back towards the road. And having crossed the road, we're going to continue along the verge in front of Fort Whitley. So as you can see, these days it hosts uh, the Peter Ashley Activity Centre, Equestrian Centre. That's uh, a charity. Uh, it also holds the Pompey Powers Museum and the South Sea Sub Aqua Club. Just up by the entrance, you're raised up even more, and you can see right across the top of the QA hospital, all the way down the solar. Wonderful. Anyway, this is the entrance. Now, we, we haven't got any permission to go in today, so I'll be showing you some photos from another YouTube channel, and that channel is called C Unit. So just to tell you a little bit about the Pompey Pals, the Pompey Pals was the name given to the, the lads that joined up in the army in the First World War and they joined the 14th and 15th Battalion of the Hampshire Regiment. Uh, obviously a lot of them were lost in the First World War, horrendous war, but somebody that wasn't was a very famous at the time person that was described as having six lives, or living a life of six lives. And that chap was Arthur Edgerton Knight. He was a, a footballer for Portsmouth, Pompey. He also had uh, England caps. Uh, he also won Olympic gold in 1912 and 1920. He was a batsman for Hampshire cricket. And amazingly, he survived the Battle of Passchendaele in the First World War in 1917. Uh, about half a million men on both sides killed in that one battle. So it was amazing that he managed to walk out of it. Um, as if one world war wasn't enough, in the second world war he joined up and became uh, an RAF squadron leader. So uh, quite a hero and uh, legendary Pompey player. Made over 200 appearances. So you can see this rather large old Victorian cannon is pointing south back over the city and in actual fact most of the guns in these forts would have been pointing north and I'll tell you why. Fort Whitley was built in the 1860s and that was a period of manic fort building around Portsmouth. They were called Palmerston's Follies over the then Prime Minister who wanted to protect Portsmouth, which is the home of the Royal Navy, from the imminent threat of the French. So there are four forts up on top of Portsdown Hill, and there's a, an unfinished redoubt. You've also got the, the forts such as Spitbank, out in the Solent, that ring the seaward end of Portsmouth, and other forts such as Brockhurst, down in Gosport that ring the western flank and of course the eastern flank is protected by, by Langston Harbour. Now no French invasion came and time went on and we got to the First World War and Fort Whitley became a transit depot. 
In the Second World War, the Royal Corps of Signals were here, and they were helping to communicate with the, the Allied forces on D-Day. And of course, D-Day was planned in Southwark House, which is just up the road there. As time went on, during the 1950s, there was the Cold War, the threat of nuclear war, so there is actually a nuclear bunker under here. Vast labyrinths of tunnels, in fact the whole of Portsdown Hill and beneath all of the different forts has got several tunnels and uh, other things as well. Right up until the 1990s, some subterranean stuff was being, being used here, which I'll tell you about shortly. But now, as I say, civilian use, it's a historic building, it's protected, it's grade listed. And uh, as I say, it's a riding school, sub aqua club, and a pump of house museum. Anyway, on with the walk. We're going that way. As we carry on down the road on the verge, you can see what looks like a stranded warship up on the hill. That, in actual fact, is kinetic, and that's where they develop all the, uh, the radars for the Royal Navy's modern fleet of ships. A lovely view of the Spinnaker Tower. If you've never been up here before, it's fantastic views. It's almost as if the sea used to lap at the bottom of Portsdown Hill and none of Portsmouth was there. Maybe that was so in millennium gone by, but uh, now it's wonderful looking over the flatter lands of Port Portsmouth and Gosport and some part of Hampshire. And uh, if you don't fancy a pub mill, then you can sit in the car park with a mixed monster burger, which is just along from the Churchillian. Very famous burger van in this area, and very nice too. So you can see where the horses have been, just inside the fence. And we're going to follow that path, only on the outside, to take us out into the countryside. So I just walk round the corner, there's another little car park. Oh, and it's got a, a coffee van or something up there. Yeah, it's Burger Bar 66, Route 66. Another option. I'll sit here in the car park. View. From the burger van, we head off down the lane. So there are some lovely views off the back of the hill too. Anyway, more about what I was talking about earlier, the underground workings and things here. So we've got the nuclear bunker, we also at Fort Southwark have got the underground headquarters of the Royal Navy. That's a hundred foot underground. There's a mile and a half of tunnels and corridors as wide as streets. And that was used to uh, communicate on D-Day as well. There's a World War II underground shelter. And that had a capacity of 4,000 persons, and that's just off London Road as you go down the hill a bit, burrowed into the hill. And there's the Portsmouth Naval Fuel Bunker. That was built in the 1930s. It was only decommissioned in the 1990s. It's got nine 35-foot high concrete storage bunkers, and it uh, had a capacity of 80,000 tonnes of oil, and that was piped directly to the dockyard and the naval ships. Anyway, 
there's lots of other videos where they actually go down the uh, tunnels and have a look at the fuel bunkers and things if you look on uh, on YouTube so uh, we shall just carry on with the walk but I recommend looking at them it is fascinating what is under this hill and of course as we carry on walking down the lane if you're a Who fan then you'll already know that uh, the 1970s rock opera Tommy well the film of it was um, filmed all around the Portsmouth area and Fort Purbrook just up the road um, was Tommy's holiday camp which probably means nothing to anyone that hasn't seen the film but anyway lots and lots of Tommy locations here including um, South Parade Pier in Portsmouth and of course looking down over the island it might whet your appetite for the uh, the long walk that we did Trev and I all around the shoreline of Portsmouth well, as far to the shoreline as you could get of course we couldn't walk through the naval dockyard but uh, that's a good one but a long one and that was from the thatched house so uh, if you want to warm up on this one and go and do that one <laughs> be my guest as I say glorious views looking north towards the Meehan Valley Of course it's very exposed, both sides of the hill from the wind, depending on which way the wind's coming. Uh, some lovely wind-withered trees along the edge of this lane. Isn't that gorgeous. And right on the bend, in the bushes, you can see a finger post. And we turn right down towards Mill Farm. Here we go. through the first kissing gate. You know, this is a pretty good winter walk. You only need a light pair of boots. There's not a lot of mud, to be honest. So, uh, the ideal walk for the winter. A few little ditches. They're running down off Portsdown Hill. And they'll eventually join up with the Wallington Brook, which is uh, deep inside those woods there. Anyway, we're going to step over the, uh, the ditch and cross over this stile to cross the next field. You can see the path runs through this area here with these clumps of grass, these tussocks. And these are a dead giveaway that this is quite a boggy underfoot area. So, uh, in wetter times you might find yourself in need of wellies but it's been a fair bit of rain and there's, there's nothing underfoot at the moment it's just good wholesome slightly soft mud but uh, not that bad anyway onward What a gorgeous pony. And once we've exited the field over the stile, a lovely pony was, we turn right into the lane. Right on up the lane, past the farm. Here we are, there's another stile. That takes us to see the path across the middle of the field there. And we exit out onto this track, which skirts Widley Farm. And at Widley Farm, we've just come from this track here. We turn right and we follow the track right back up to the main road. And just to our left across the fields is the edge of urban Portsmouth. And that's the uh, conurbation of Widley. 
Now presumably that supports some waterboard as it's down on the map as a reservoir. So it'd be an underground reservoir. And you'll see right over to the downland. And we're going to turn right back on the main course down Hill Road, up past Mixed Monster Burgers, and back to the pub. And where there are burger vans, there are inevitably crows and seagulls. Just take a break up here sometimes. I'm going to perch on my door mirror. <laughs> Tap on the window. So, 40 years. Mix Monster Burgers have been there. First came up here in 1981. A long time to grow a good reputation, as you can see from the queues. He has got a good reputation. And there's Harbour Heights, fairly new apartment block. And we're back at the Churchillian. So here we are back at the Churchillian. Nice little short one, as I say, a good walk for the winter. It's fairly dry underfoot. The ground is soft where it is soft and, and not muddy. It's not going to clog up your boots. And uh, it's it's nice, interesting little walk. And just right for having something in the pub and going round or having a monster burger or, <laughs> or burger up the way, whatever you want. Or you can even add a visit into the Pompey Powers Museum. Now that might be a good visit. It wasn't open today, as you saw. As I say, I'll stick some pictures up um, during the video. Anyway, if you like that walk, then uh, please like and subscribe. And uh, I think now I'm going to go in and grab some lunch.